Ulster is one of the most linguistically rich places in the world. Let's start at the beginning. You've got Irish. Think about your own surnames, your own townland names. So that's part of who we are. And then there's this, the Scots element. Ulster Scots is a, a fascinating linguistic importation from Scotland into Ireland. And then, of course, what's often forgotten in all of this is you can talk about your Irish, you can talk about your Ulster Scots, but what do most of us do? We speak our Mid-Ulster English. And this hybrid, which is what Ulster has today, is really Scottish, Irish, Northern Hiberno-English, this lovely blend which makes our language so unique. John Braidwood, he was a, a Queen's lecturer, a Queen's researcher, and he was fascinated by dialect. And he said, um, Ulster dialect begins like a bad joke. There was an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman. And he was quite right, of course. Warren Maguire is a lecturer in English language at the University of Edinburgh. He's originally from County Tyrone in Northern Ireland an area with a rich and diverse linguistic heritage. I think it, it's deeply rooted in, in, in my life. I grew up in the rural Tyrone countryside. I lived there till I was 18. And I, I don't know, I don't think I could have lived there and not been interested in language. It was all around me all the time, from the townland names that are so characteristic of, of Ireland. Um, the dialect of my father, my grandfather, my grandmother, the farmers around about us, the dialect words, the way people spoke in towns being different from the way we spoke in the countryside, and the fact that in Northern Ireland, everything to do with language is kind of interesting and political. You can't get away from it. For the past 15 years, Warren has been recording the way people speak in his hometown land in Mid-Ulster. This is the town land of Rakeeran Beg in the county of Tyrone, between Fenton and Dromore, where I developed my love of the countryside and of the dialect. Anytime I'm home, I, uh, I bring my recording equipment with me and uh, try to make an effort to record somebody when I'm here, whether it be a relative or a neighbour or somebody through a connection or something. Or sometimes I just get in the car and go around land in the street and uh, say, I, I'm so-and-so's son, I'm, I'm, I'm Jack's son, uh, you wouldn't be able to help me, would you? And they say, what are you doing anyway? And I said, well, I'm doing this dialect project. I'm trying to gather up a bit of the way people speak in this part of the world, you know, and some of the memories of the place, a bit of the history of the place. And you know what Irish people are like? Once you get them talking, you've no bother. The Mid-Ulster dialect is kind of an, a unique and interesting form of English for the following reasons. First of all, it's only about 400 years old. So it's a newish dialect of English. It's not a very new dialect of English, but it's a newish dialect of English. How did this new dialect develop? Well, we, we all know how it developed. It developed through the settlement of the planters from England and Scotland coming to Ireland, interacting with each other and interacting with the Irish speakers in Tyrone. And you get the development of a new dialect coming about through contact between those different groups of speakers. So you've got 17th century English, 17th century Scots, 17th century Irish, all in contact with each other. So this house you're living in, tell me a wee bit about it. No, this is a quarter house. This was originally, you know, what is called a quarter house here, belonging to the farm up there. Aye. Yeah, usually a person living in the quarter house would have to be working for the farmer, you know. Right. And then there's, a, there's people named Amos, one time lived there, and then the, the woman's husband, I believe, died. Mm -hmm. And uh, then she was put out of the house because she was no longer of use to the farm because she wasn't, you see, uh, the, or, she had no husband working for them. Aye. Mm -hmm. And then she was heartbroken. She used to come to the head of that hill and look over the house and cry. And I don't know where she was living then, but she used to every day come over and look over the house. Mm. An old woman. Hard that's, times, yeah. I don't mm. know, that, that might be going back about 100 years. Mm -hmm. I just ran into my uncle there. He, he noticed us out, me out about the road and he, uh, he thought he'd pop his head out. And that's the way it goes in Tyrone. You, you bump into somebody and they're they, they love to see you and have a chat and a blather. And it's a nice wee illustration, really, of, of what it's all about. It's, it's about the dialect, yes, and you can hear that. But it's about more than that. It's about 
connecting with the people in here and their stories and find out a bit about the area. I mean, that's something I'd never heard before in my life about the relationship between that house and the, the larger farmhouse. So it just shows you what you can find on the country roads of Tyrone. Right, Dad, well, we've done this before, so this is nothing new to us. I'm going to rig you up with a microphone here and do a wee bit of a session and record okay. some stuff. So Things are changing rapidly in Tyrone as they are everywhere in the English-speaking world and elsewhere. The dialect's changing and it's not just changing in, its, in the way it's changed for centuries, it's changing rapidly, it's levelling if you like, with more exposure to other varieties, more education and so on. Many a time in your life I'm sure you must have been involved in the cutting of turf or spade. Could you maybe give me a wee rundown about how that oh, worked? I, uh, I used to be kept at home from school for a week to fill turf. You see you had the bog bank and uh, there was then the bog hole from the year before mm -hmm. and the, the bog bank was paired to about three to four foot wide mm -hmm. and the parents were threw down into the bog hole. Right. And then there were so many flowers you see mm -hmm. and uh, there was a turf spit and it had like an ordinary spit but it had a flange on it right. and it cut the turf from the shape and there was, a, there was somebody cut one. It's all right being interested in it but unless you record it how can you actually say anything about it? So I set myself this mission, and I've been at it now for almost 15 years, of going into the Tyrone countryside, speaking to older people in the countryside, recording them. Uh, the weather wasn't too good, you footed them. And what's footing now? That was, you get two or three turf and propped them up against each other, oh, yeah. kind of standing up, uh -huh. and then the air got through them. Uh -huh. And then uh, if that didn't work, they were rickled. What's Rickland? Rickland was you put two turf this road and two turf that road and two turf the other road and one turf on the top. Oh, so yeah. just a wee structure like that? Aye, and then whenever they were in the Rickles for a while, then they were, they were clamped, uh -huh. which was kind of like made into big Rickles about three foot, two and a half foot wide in the bottom and it went up to it, got narrow up at the top. Uh -huh. Gathering up these recordings and, you know, well, it's not just the about the, the dialect, it's also about the stories, about the people. You, you, some of the things that, that people have told me about, you know, stories from the past, stories about things that have happened in their farms, are amazing and it's a, it's a wonderful thing to have recorded. And there's another word, harpling. What about harpling? What was that? Well, I'm a kind of harpling myself at the <laughs> minute. If you're lame there and you walk in a kind of way, I hop, that's harpling. Right, right. And then you hear tell people, hauling. That's a kind of walloping along, you know. Right. And then there's slither and that's trailing your feet on the ground, so. more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.